Welcome back to the third and last part of our tutorial series on rigging a character puppet. For those who had no chance to watch the previous two episodes, a quick look on our character in action, namely Sue, the girl in pink. So far we have learned how to prepare our puppet in Illustrator, part 1, uh, imported and rigged mouth, hand and eye shapes in part 2, as well as how to troubleshoot problems that came up when creating our arrangement. Ok, so let's start. This is what we have so far. With our sliders, we can manipulate our hand shapes, our eyebrows freely. Let's finish up our eyes. Ok, so let's start. This is what we have so far. With our sliders, we can manipulate our hand shapes and eyebrows freely. Let's finish up our eyes now. As I said, we will need our pupils to move, so to indicate where our character is looking at a given time. But before we do so, maybe it would be a better idea to deal with the eyelids. Let's choose our left eyelid layers and precompose them. Let's name this precomposition eye left and do the same for the right eye as well and name it accordingly. Let's unsolo these layers and dive into one of the precomps that we have just created. Here we are. The general idea is the same as in case of hands. Let's make sure we are on frame 1 and trim these layers to one frame long. Shortcut Alt plus and brackets. Ok, so we have four layers overlapping each other. Let's leave the open eye uh, layers on frame 1 and closed one uh, on frame 2. And make a few adjustments. Let's change the resolution and set background to black so we can see better what we are doing. We need, more, uh, we need two more intermediate poses, so let's duplicate the open layers and spread them this way. And the same for the close eye poses. And we have our four eye poses to animate our blinkings. Let's shorten our comp to four frames long. And deal with the right eye as well. At this point we will have to synchronize our two precomps as we will animate them as one unit. So let's move our eye left precomposition down by holding left mouse button and dragging it below the other comp. Now we can easily compare our two comps and reorder our lead layers. So fully open eye and fully close as well as our mid positions are in the same place. Let's trim our right eye comb and move on. Ok, here they are, our 4 frame long combs. Let's time remark them and link them with our control layer. Let's open our default comb and lock our control layer and minimize our controllers to make it easier to work with. Let's duplicate one of our sliders to recycle it with the eyelids comb. Let's rename it to Eyes Shapes. Let's go to our face precomp and copy mouth rig expressions again. Again, we will right click on the layer and choose Time and enable time remapping. We we'll remove the second keyframe and paste our expression by alt clicking our time remark property first. Let's link our expression to our newly created slider control layer shapes and copy the expression to the other eye comp as well. And since there are four shapes, as in the copied controller from left hand, there's not even a need to edit the sliders range as it is exactly the same here, from 0 to 3. Let's check our blinking in action.
Let's now move back to our default comp and add a new slider control. We'll use it to control our two eye pupils movement in X dimension. I think we won't need our iris to go up and down, so we'll only control it in the X dimension only. Let's copy our expression and alt click on the eye pupil position and paste it there. Let's rename our slider to left pupil. Again, we add a plus sign and link it to our slider. Let's now tweak our pupil's initial position and its slider range until we arrive at something that we are happy with. Ok, I think we are home. I think the value of minus 20 to 10 on the slider is good. Let's copy our expression and paste it to the other pupil as well. This way, we will link our two pupils to the same slider. Again, let's check our arrangement. We can never be too careful about that. Let's go back to the main comp and zoom in on our character. Of course, we want it to be as sharp as possible when we render. So I think it's time to switch our layers continuously rasterize switch. And since they are vector layers, they will look perfect, no matter how close we will zoom in or out. At this point, we will also switch our character's layers to 3D, so we can move our character in Z dimension. Instantly, you will observe a weird behavior. But don't panic, it's all due to the fact that we have four precomps with continuously rasterized button switched on, which means they inherit all properties from the inside, which means that they stay with the 2D values. You have to dig in in each of the precomps in our composition and change every layer to 3D and continuously rasterized. You may ask why we didn't do it in the first place, before parenting. Well, I think it's easier this way, as you may accidentally move some layers in Z dimension otherwise, as it happened to me on several occasions when rigging my previous characters. Ok, let's now check how our character behaves when we move our camera rig. I think all is fine and the edges are sharp as knife. But to be on the safe side, let's also check our controllers. Let's keyframe some movement and see what it looks like in action. Obviously, when you animate those features, as eye shapes or hand shapes, you should set those keyframes to hold keyframes, not to get this jerky or jumpy movement as we are having over here. Ok, so the test is passed, so let's get rid of those keyframes and minimize our controllers. Log our control layer again and start rigging joints. You rig them using forward kinematics. I experimented heavily with IK, which is inverted kinematics, which is possible in After Effects thanks to a great plugin by Dada called Duik. As for version 13 or something, I think this plugin creates an IK rig in 3D as well. Though personally, I encountered many problems with animating, and early on, even though it's an amazing plugin, especially to work with Puppet Tool. I simply felt I have more control and less hassle going the old-fashioned way. Ok, so let's do it then my way. Let's create a new controller, Engage controller for controlling rotation, and go from the bottom up for each layer. Let's select all the layers of the legs and press R for rotation. 
and let's rename our controller right leg up to correspond with the name of the layer we will control. Let's alt click on rotation parameter and link it with our new angle controller and do the same for leg down and foot layers as well. Let's duplicate our three controllers and move them down. Let's rename them for the other leg and link our left leg layers with them as we did for the right leg. Let's now reveal our whole body null layer position properties and create a new control on our control layer. This time it's a 3D controller. And so let's rename it to whole body for clarity. Let's paste our 3D breaking expression On our position property here and link each dimension with controller. Index number 0 stands for x, 1 for y and 2 for z. Let's test our newly created controller. Ok, it all works as planned. Now let's rig our arm as we did in case of our legs. With only one difference, we will control our sleeve instead of the other arm. I think it will make simply more sense to do it this way. Maybe now, to break this monotony, let's rig our head. We will rig the rotation property of the neck to control our head. Let's duplicate one of the angle controllers and rename it to head rotation small. And the same for our skirt layer, so it bends right and left. Let's call this controller body rotation small as well. Later on, we'll add two controllers to rotate our characters 100 degrees. That's why we will use the word small for those rotations over here. Let's maybe deal with the pencils right now, so we can animate them 
once our character for example walks or jumps. Again we will copy our anchor control and rename it to pencils rotation. I think it would be silly to control pencils separately, it would be simply too much work. So we will link them both to one controller. But as you can see over here, they have this uniform movement, which also looks silly and very unnatural. So to fix it, we'll multiply our parameter in one pencil by minus one, which will make the pencil move in the opposite direction to the other one, and make it look more realistic. Let's go back to our head now, and copy our head rotation. Let's rename it maybe uh, to swap, since we want at instant to swap the direction of our head from left to right. Okay, but here we encounter a problem. It can be done though with this uh, angle controller, though we won't be able to edit or limit somehow the values here, so we need to work around this. So let's then get rid of our expression and this angle control and replace it with a slider control. Let's copy hand slider for this purpose and rename it again. Let's link our rotation with it. As you can see, it works fine. All we have to do is just edit our slider maximum values this time. This way we will make our slider to swap our head in an instant, left to right and back. We we'll repeat the same for our entire character and link whole body Y rotation with it. And here's the result. The only thing left now is to make our character appear and disappear with one click. Adding this feature makes sense only when you build a rig with many characters. Then you want to simply have this ability as having a few characters to, for example, RAM preview or render at the same time is really time consuming and will greatly affect your workflow. If you want to learn more on some workflow tips, when creating animation with many characters in it, check my 10 workflow tips tutorial in the link below this video. Okay, let's create a new checkbox control. And as you can see, we have a checkbox here. Let's rename it to, let's say, sue on and sue off. And copy our character expression, which is a basic if statement in JavaScript. Maybe just briefly let me explain the if, if statement. So it goes like this. If some feature in brackets is true, in this case if our checkbox is on, double equals sign, one, one stands for true, and hence double equal sign, in JavaScript it means equal. A single equal sign only assigns a value to a variable. We'll link it here in the brackets, then it equals 100, which means 100% opaque. If not, here else, opacity will be set to zero, which is fully transparent. The template below uses curly brackets, though After Effects is more lenient about it and you don't really have to use them. But let's copy them here to make it more readable for you. Ok, let's select all layers, with the exception of controllers, and paste our expression in the opacity property. 
we get an initial error, which is ok, as After Effects has no idea which checkbox we are referring to. Let's link now what's inside the brackets with our checkbox. Whoops, another error occurred, and this is simply because of my fault. Of course, when we link it, we left one closing bracket out, and now we have two instead of one. Expressions are very syntax sensitive, and you have to be really careful when li linking or writing them. Let's remove it and paste our expression to the other layers as well. Unfortunately, I didn't come up with any solution on how to automatize this process, so you will have to do it layer by layer. Though believe me, it will pay off later on, big time, when you actually will be working with many characters and animating them. Ok, here the magic click on and off. As you can see, we can easily switch on and switch off our character. Ok, so let's try all the layers and we are left with only two controllers as camera rig and our character. Easy to work with and animate. And of course, remember, there's no such thing as perfect rig. During your animation process, you will occasionally need to move some parts initially you didn't plan. If you do it once or twice during the whole process of animation, there's simply no point rigging this property. Let's organize our controllers in a more logical way now. Have fun rigging and animating and experiment with my character freely. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.